So I'm Bex from Social Media Executive, and today we're going to be talking about four storytelling hooks for businesses that you can use on your social media. This has been inspired actually by one of our social flock members, Nikki Cameron. She is a photographer and um, she did a post this weekend that's already got 22,000 views on LinkedIn impressions. And so that sort of inspired me to think, actually, we all could do with using great storytelling hooks. So again, I'm going to share and show you her post and also jump into four hooks that we can all use on our social media. So if you are watching, please do say hello, tell us what you do, introduce yourselves. And as well, if you've got any comments, please do post them below. Any questions? If you've got other good hooks that you think you could use on social media, please share them in the chat because it'd be useful for everybody as well. So please do, please do say hello today uh, and tell us who you are. Okay. So again, this live stream is brought to you from the Social Flock, which is our social media support group where we all come together. We write our posts together each week on live on Zoom to hold each other accountable to get our social sorted for our businesses. So social media hooks can really create a good basis for any post. So let me jump in and share my screen and I will show you the four hooks that I think any business can use and you can really captivate and entice your audience to read further on, on, on your social media. So just bear with me while I um, share my screen. So I'm Bex from Social Media Executive. Um, please do connect with me on LinkedIn. So if you have any questions, just scan that QR code, connect with me on LinkedIn, and I will happily, happily um, share any sort of ideas. So this is the post that Nikki did this weekend, which I think is brilliant. So all she did was she just put, sat on the train on the way to London in the quiet carriage. Now, the photo she's taken with that picture, with that statement, is obviously doesn't look like it's going to be a quiet carriage, does it? And she goes on to say that, no, it wasn't a quiet carriage, but actually it was one of the most enjoyable journeys that she's ever seen. And this is the importance of storytelling. As you can see, she's already had 200 over 270 likes on LinkedIn. She's, you know, it's gone out on Facebook as well. It's had a huge, huge reach in just a couple of days. And this is because she's storytelling. We are talking to people, connecting with people on our social media. We're not trying to sell anything. And it's these storytelling posts that do phenomenally well. So I've got for storytelling story opening hooks that you can use that's applicable for any business. And I'm going to go through them one at a time. And this is really important for all our social flock members that are watching as well, because this month's theme is about storytelling. So we're encouraging all our members to tell more stories in their social media to get more engagement and connect at a deeper level, really, with your followers on social media. So uh, we're going to be sharing with you for here for here, but I'll be sharing more in our private Facebook group for the social flock as well, which again, I will share details with at the end of this video. So the first one then that I quite like is this one. Please stop. It's time I had a rant. Now I love this one because it's asking people to take action. Please stop, stop scrolling on past my posts. It's time I had a rant. Now we can all empathize with this we can all empathize with this because we've all been part of that in the past where we've wanted to just have a rant about something so people are curious then ah oh, what is it what is it bex what is it bex wants to rant about now i've based this as pretending i'm a hr manager so to show you that it can be relatable to anyone all these stories are absolutely made up but i'm just going to show you how it can relate to different sectors so here, let's assume we're a HR manager. So I just put, please stop. It's time I had a rant. As a HR manager, I've seen it all. But there's one thing that drives me up the wall, ghosting during the hiring process. Just last month, we had an incredibly promising candidate, Jane, who aced every interview and seemed genuinely excited about the role. We offered her the position and then nothing. 
no responses, no return calls, she vanished. So as you can see, we're actually making it applicable to what happens in your business, okay? So we're actually telling a story. So as you can see, you could pick out any element of your business that really makes you want to have a rant, okay? But you can also then turn it on its head and talk about how you overcame this, how you made things better. So if I was going to do this, I would probably say, please stop. It's time I had a rant about sharing is caring. Again, this is one of my pet hates. When people put on their social media, please share this with all your friends and family. Sharing is caring. It drives me up the wall because ultimately, if you ask people to share your posts, it's potentially sharing your content to people who are just not interested. They're not your target market. And I had a client who'd been doing this time and time again. And ultimately, they ended up with a really disengaged Facebook page because all her content was just shared with people who just weren't interested. So sharing is not caring. So that would be my rant. So again, have a think about something in your sector that you can talk about, that you can solve potentially with clients as well, okay? So the next one then is this one. I make no secret of it, I hate dot, dot, dot. Again, staying with the theme of a HR manager, I would just say, I make no secret of it, I hate dot, 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 the annual performance review process. Now that's a bit of a shock really, because most HR managers surely are trying to encourage this but then we go on to explain that in my years as a HR manager I've always found the traditional yearly review to be ineffective and frustrating for both employees and managers one particular story one particular story stands out so again I'm not going to read it all but as you go on you can see how we can relate to that story okay and again talk about how that problem is solved and actually how you ed edit and change the annual performance review to make it much more effective okay so it's showing your skills again i would probably say something like i make no secret of it i hate doing videos i do i do videos that's one of the reasons i do these live videos every week because I hold my community, you guys, accountable by telling you all I'm going to go live on a Monday. But I actually hate doing videos. If it was a pre-recorded one, I'd never get around to doing it. But because it's live and I promise you I'm going to turn up, I will turn up. OK, but yes, I hate doing videos. OK, so again, put your story behind it. Put your slant on there. OK, so the next one then that I've got for you is disappointment it hit me as dot 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 so being in line as a hr manager it hit me as i reviewed the latest employee engagement survey results so again you can link it to anywhere any area of your business that you've always been disappointed and because we're talking about disappointment we've all felt disappointment I and mean, we're all curious to find out why this person might be disappointed but again, it's finished at the end. However, instead of feeling defeated, we saw this as an opportunity for growth and improvement. So it's highlighting how you might have improved your services, okay, or how you have improved the business, okay? So one of these areas might be, um, I might just say, disappoint me, disappointment. It hit me as I reviewed my latest clients' engagement statistics. They massively decreased and basically when we actually drilled down into why these had decreased was because actually she had had a viral post and ultimately got loads of followers who were totally not her target market so once we understood why this has happened and we could then work towards removing those followers that weren't relevant that were never going to engage with the content and within within a couple of weeks of removing those followers her engagement started to increase so again you can relate it to a client story and how you turned things around 
Okay. So don't forget if you've got any ideas as well before we move on to the next one of enticing hooks that you see, please do post them in the chat. Let us know. Okay. So the next one then, the final one is, I love this one. I wish someone had told me about this when I first started my career in HR. So again, stick into that theme where you can relate it to anything. Earlier in my career, I struggled with employee turnover and low morale. I was constantly putting out fires without understanding the root causes. One day, a mentor introduced me to the concept of employee recognition programs. It seemed simple enough, but its impact was profound. And again, it's just a really, really good way of highlighting your experience, your knowledge and what you've learned that you can then pass on to your clients as well. So this is a really, really powerful opening hook. OK, so if I was going to do this, I would probably say something like I wish someone had told me about this when I first started in my business. Um, and again, I probably talk about the customer journey because I've worked with over 800 companies across the world. But when I first started out, I didn't have a proper customer journey to, to keep in touch with all those clients. I connected with them on social media, but there was no back end process to sort that out. And again, if you need help with your customer journey, speak to Veronica Kitten. Um, she was on my live stream a few weeks back and also um, she um, massively helps helped me with my customer journey. So those are four really, really good hooks that I can guarantee if you relate it to your business, it's going to draw people straight in. It's got to be the first line of your social media post. OK, so it really does have to be that first line of your social media post. And if you're interested in joining the social flock, we're going to be sharing a few, lots more hooks in the private Facebook group over the coming weeks as well to help with the storytelling month in August. And it's going to be great listening to all our member stories in there as well. But if you want to be part of this dynamic group where we all work together to help us help each other write our social media, if you're a business that does your own social media, but this needs a bit more accountability to be a bit more consistent and really start generating leads, then do think about joining the social flock. It's only £45 a month for the full membership. Um, and we'd love to welcome you to the group. And I will just share the link in there as well. OK, so that is my four hooks. If you've got anyone's any hooks that you'd like to share, please do let me know because I'd love to see them. Again, if you're a member of the social flock, please do share those hooks in the group as well. And uh, I will share this one, uh, the social flock here. Um, Paul's just says you can't beat a good hook. Exactly. Paul, do share some of your hooks in, in the chat. Um, but do, do join the social flock. Uh, I'm not live now for the next couple of weeks, but I will be back uh, in three weeks with Sarah, who's going to be talking about going live on social media, which basically is a really nice way of making yourselves do videos, as I've already told you before. But she's going to be talking, talking you through how she overcame that going live on social media and how she overcame that fear. Uh, so please jo join me and for lots more social media tips and advice. And if you're watching this on YouTube, then please do like and subscribe to my channel. There you will find lots more help and advice on social media. Thanks for watching. See you soon.